Mm -mm -mm. Hey, welcome to another Extra Bases with Bristol and Booth. Jason Bristol, Jeremy Booth. Hey, Jeremy, how are you? I'm good. How are I you? I know you're good. <laughs> People have been talking about you lately. I don't know if you know that or not. Um, I haven't paid attention. I, I have, uh, I've spoken to you. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've heard about some of the, um, and, I, and you know, I, I guess it'd be different if I cared. I, I don't care. You know what I mean? So I, it's kind of, it's kind of like I sit here and I go, should I be bothered by this? Should it affect me? Should I go cry into a pillow? Nah, nope. I'm gonna skill, keep doing what I'm doing, you know. And I don't. Um, I, I the funny thing is, people see this stuff and they they come to me with it. And then you know, on Twitter, I got a, a text from a very high high ranking several text message, high ranking personnel and other in, in other front offices. Um, one guy said, "Lineup construction is an art." takes years to i'm paraphrasing this isn't exactly it but um years to learn how to do it it's and and people don't understand it and he said some other things that i'll leave out of it but the reality was is that if you don't if you haven't had to balance one you haven't had to do it and you think we're all everybody's a robot and everybody's interchangeable and all that matters is you know one guy said all that matters is getting your best hitters in the lineup okay well let's see how that works out and it's once again not working out with the, I think it was the 11th different lineup, Jason. Is that right? The Something 11th. like that. You know, no, most I mean, people, most people on X, because we're posting clips, short clips, it's, hey, go watch the entire thing here. And because of that, the simple way of stating this, of what you're talking about, is what you're talking about with Jordan. It's less about Jordan and more about everyone else in the lineup. It's it's about Jordan to the degree of making him comfortable. And it's funny how some of these people who 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 got it out of a book, like literally, that's their not extent of the knowledge. They got it out of a book. I I asked, I asked one guy who I did reply to. I said, "Have you ever worked in baseball in any capacity?" He goes, "That's a pretty thin skin response." No, it's actually a legitimate answer, question. Have you done this? Have you worked in the game? Have you covered it as, a, as as somebody in the media? Have you talked to players? Have you been a player? Have you scouted? Have you done development? Have you put a team together? If you haven't, shut it. And I mean that because you don't have – that's like, you know, that's the Holiday Inn Express X guy. You know what I mean? That commercial – I kept replaying this, Holiday Inn Express. Hey, nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. Are you a doctor? No. I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night. That's what you guys are. You're Holiday Inn Express people. And why would that bother me? It's irritating from a standpoint of the game. Like, man, who wants to listen to that? But you know what? That's why I don't. That's why I don't. Because I don't want to hear it. I'm going to focus on put on, on saying what is said in the game. And people see that. And people listen to that. And if they don't want to, there's called a button that says off. Off. No one's forcing you to pay attention to actual baseball knowledge. Feel free to get it out of baseball for dummies. I don't know. It's actually a book. It's actually a book. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Next time you see me walking around the stadium, stop me. Talk to me. Ask a question. Let's talk about a player that I signed. Let's talk about the use of analytics. To those of you in the back, and I do mean in the way back, that think they're going to talk about the analytics that I'm against, that I don't use, you want to talk about a lazy take. That's a lazy take. All you got to do is look at my my ex and my company's ex and see what we're doing. Read something one time instead of just doing this because it sounds good. See, that's not being authentic and that's not even being good at your job. That's, that's why I don't pay attention to you. You're not good at your job. You're not good at your job if that's what you say. You know who's good at their job? People who are informed on a topic. That's who's good at their job. Now, I'm informed on lineup construction because I grew up in it. I've also had to hit in different spots, not very well as a professional. That's not the point. Point is, I had to do all these things, and I had to go out and live it. I've had to draft players based on where their role, role would be, and I'll put my resume. Yes, my resume. You know those things that you're supposed to have to get a job? I'll put my resume up against every single one of you that wants to come up at me. 
even the guy for, who's a math teacher, if you'd like to compare things, because I don't listen to you, I, I just don't. I hear this information and I like laugh. I really do laugh. I think it's funny. I'll go up one one on one with you. Let's go to a ballpark together. Let's go pick players. Let's go write scouting reports. Let's go look at data and let's analyze it. And then let's talk about role prediction and impact. And let's talk about the mental side of the game, which is something you don't understand because you've never had to do it. So when it comes to a Jordan Alvarez, who is your best player, best hitter, it ain't even close, best hitter. And there's some good hitters in that team. He's best hitter, Okay. He needs to be as comfortable as possible with as much traffic on the base pads as possible. If you disagree with that, you need to turn in your baseball card and never go watch a game. Now, I don't care where you hit him. I don't care if you hit him first, second, third, ninth, as long as he's comfortable. That's all I care about. And as long as there's traffic on the bases, that's all I care about too. But last I checked, the Astros having a hard time scoring runs, except for three games where they had big outbursts. And it's the 11th different lineup tonight, maybe 12th, maybe 10th, somewhere around there. Did you know that? Did you know that was that was going on, big guy? Did you? You probably didn't because you're too busy reading things out of a book instead of experiencing it. So miss me with this, I'm going to sit on the court side, or I'm going to ask questions, or I'm going to throw this stuff out there that are uninformed. You want questions? Ask them. I'll answer them. You want to talk about what it means to grow up around Hall of Famers? I'm sorry. Let me say that again for those of you that are listening way in the back. Hall of Famers. You want to go draft a player? You want to go throw your stuff on the line, get a big leaguer? You want to go fight in the room? Until you do, shut it. Shut it. Because otherwise, anything you say doesn't matter to me. It's just noise, so I don't listen to it. Matter of fact, I feel bad for the game, for the game that you guys got a, got a voice for that. That's what I feel bad for, because who wants to listen to that? So you know what people do? You know what people do? We hit the mute button on YouTube. So say what you want. Say what you want. If you don't, this is, you ready, Jason? You ready? You ready? If you don't like what I do and you still watch everything I do, you're still a fan. You're still a fan, buddy. Okay? If you think what I'm saying isn't relevant, then shut it. Go watch something else. If you think what I'm saying is wrong, you're entitled to your opinion. Nothing you say to me is going to bother me. I literally sit there and I laugh about how asinine some of these responses are. And when the Astros have 10, 12, 14 hits and they get three runs, if you can't realize that's a problem in lineup construction, if you can't realize your manager, their manager, is trying to find the way to get Jordan Alvarez and Tucker and Kyle Tucker as many opportunities to drive in runs as possible, then you never need to watch the game again. Pumpkin, okay? Go do something else. Because that's what they want to do. Go watch basketball. Go watch hockey. Go watch soccer. I know. Go do some math. But I spent my life in this game. I'm very happy with my life. And while we're here, for those of you that talk about bitter, you know what makes me bitter? I'll tell you what makes me bitter. It makes me bitter is things where my family's not taken care of. It makes me bitter when... Um, Someone tries to take what's mine. It's called theft. It makes me bitter when I'm racially discriminated against, which happens, by the way, still consistently today. You think you can make me bitter or me not working in baseball is bitter? Um, the amount of job opportunities that I've had to go back, you can't even spell. Can't do it. You couldn't put these teams together in the alphabet if I drew a, a, a tic-tac-toe board with a, you know, with a Sharpie. You have no idea. OK, if I counted these, you have don't have enough fingers. You have no idea what it means to be on this side of it and do it. You have no idea what it means to have opportunities and not take them because they're not right for you. You have no idea what it means to build yourself up in this game and go forward. You know why? Because you can't do it. That's why. You can't do it. It's not for you because this game has to choose you. Very fortunate to walk through this game my entire life. And, yeah, have a pretty blessed upbringing. Let's, I mean, it's a blessed upbringing. Ricky Henderson and Dave Stewart, Eric Davis and Daryl Strawberry and Chris Brown and, and Jose Canseco and, and Mark McGuire and the, the guys I played against and with. 
J.D. Drew and Troy Gloss and and Jim Parquet and Randy Wolf. These are all guys that grew up. Out Scott Ellerton, former Astro. Lance Berkman, same draft class. If I handed you my jock strap, you couldn't hold it. Whether it was on the field, whether it's in the gym, whether it's really breaking down a player, or whether it is talking about the numbers that go into role prediction, like why fastball quality matters and why fastballs in the strike zone matters and why life and angle and, and, and release point matters. Why does that matter? Do you know why that matters? I bet you don't. Do you know why breaking ball swings and misses matters? Do you know why breaking ball dominant guys matters? You know how to set those guys up and work back? Do you know why you need to protect your fastball? Do you know what playing in front of the plate means? Do you know how to use the whole field? Do you know what it means to stay inside the baseball? Do you know what it means to set your eyes a certain part of the field? And do you know how to do it? I'm sorry, pumpkin, I didn't hear you. So before you start talking about me being bitter, what pisses me off, if we're going to get there, if there is something, are real issues. I mean, real issues. You guys are fictional characters. You're fictional characters. And you're not even, you sit there behind avatars and act like your voice matters. So it can matter to you. And you can scream into the clouds all you want. You can go on air, go on air, and you talk about, Just make an idiot out of yourself. You can do that. How about this? Don't be lazy. Go look up a guy who had a who fought for everything in his career that he could through injuries, playing internationally, independent ball, a couple organizations. Go look that up. Go look up a guy who wrote a best-selling book called Inside the Mind of a Scout. Go look up a guy who built something with his bare hands from the ground up and has 22 of the top 100 MILB prospects to start the year on most people's list to his evaluation credit including a guy that was traded to the New York Mets to get Justin Verlander back, by the way. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you miss that detail? Hmm. Go find where I was wrong about Kyle Tucker needing to change his approach. Said it. That's part of what we do. The receipts are recorded. It is. You can go back and look at it. Go talk about how he had to grow up. Go look at Alex Bregman's growth and maturity and the things I said about him and look how he addressed it and moved forward. You know why? Because I can put it out there and I'll say it and, I'll, and I'm not afraid to run from it. This is me. This is my, that's my ex. It's still my face. It's got a little blue check next to it. Yes, we pay for those now. Yes, we do. But you know what? I got it because it's actually who I am. Go look at no Bo Nalo over Seth Beer. Go look what I said about Bukowskis. Go look about the questions I had about Whitley's makeup. Go look at what I said about analytics later in the draft, about how that's what I want to hear. I want to hear from the analysts about stuff we don't know, guys we don't see, hidden insights. But yes, I hate analytics, right? None of that bothers me because you sound brutal when you say it. Because you're just trying to get some, 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 some I think it's called... Um, What's it called? Gang mentality or mob mentality? I'm trying to get mob, trying to get some mob mentality over here, bro. You can't touch me. You can't touch me. You're not relevant to me. What's relevant to me is doing this day to day, talking about the game of baseball and the guy on the other side of my screen. That's what's relevant to me. Okay. And by the way, all thirty teams, all thirty, and our former mayor have gone out of their way to tell us how good a job I do. I'm going to roll with them. I'm just going to roll with them. I, you know, excuse me for staying with my peer group. You know, I know it's ceremonial and all that. Excuse me for rolling with my peer group. Excuse me for finding good players. Excuse me for turning them out. Excuse me for dealing with people and being upfront about it. I had somebody say to me today that I haven't, um, or somebody said to, you know, don't say as much as I say. Man, that's just me. That's me. That's the authentic me. If you don't like it, I can't help you. Nor do I care to help you. I don't spend my time looking in your windows and trying to tell you how to live your life. I don't even tell you your opinions are wrong. You say whatever you want. You don't see me going after you on Twitter and X and, and trying to sound like I got some authority or I got some brains. 
You couldn't bother me if you were over my shoulder screaming in my ear while I was watching the game, breaking it down. That's how insignificant you are. Maybe I'll show up to your math class. Huh? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll show up to your math class and I'll tell you, I'll tell you how wrong you are with what you're teaching. You know why I don't do that? Because I got half a brain. I don't know how to do what you do. I don't. I don't have the arrogance to think that I that I actually do. So when you can figure out how to put something together, when you can figure out how to put a club together, and you can look at how to lengthen a lineup and use your assets to make that work, talk to me. Until then, you're just talking to Eric. But if you want to actually have a conversation, I'm right here. Good night, everybody. Very well said, Jeremy. Very well said. I know somebody had mentioned on that platform about being, he's not an on-pace guy. Um, but if you look, and if I did my math correct, while Jordan is certainly on pace to have um, a great season, the Astros are on pace right now to have 200 fewer runs than they did last year. Which is what I what we said on Sports Extra, what I said on the lineup stuff was it's about the team. I said, put a guy in the two hole and let him hit there because he's your best hitter and then lose. And I talked about Otani and Judge and I said, did I miss the parades? And by the way, I went back and looked, there weren't any parades. Now, some will say Corey Seager got a parade. He was batting number two. And Freddie Freeman. Behind, but who hits behind Corey Seager? Garcia and that guy. Okay. Look at the Rangers lineup. It's longer than five hitters. You have more than five hitters in this lineup. You just got to position them right. You got to position them right. You're talking about a guy in the nine hole who didn't make the playoff roster last year. We're hanging our hats on him to play center field. You're talking about keeping guys fresh and moving guys around. You're talking about McCormick, who's going to swing and miss a ton and hit 20. He's going to swing and miss a ton. You got a guy in Diaz who's in his second year. I remember I said about Pena in year one. I said, doesn't matter what year one is. It matters for the team, but you find out in year two. Why would you not want that guy to be successful? And don't tell me that you think he can just stand out there. And by the way, hitting a breaking ball with two strikes is a lot harder than hitting a fastball. But you guys don't seem to understand that. Why wouldn't you want to get guys in positions to drive in and capitalize? As good as these guys are, you don't want to do that. That was the point of the conversation. And you showed me you didn't have a brain because you didn't listen to the conversation. You decided to turn around. What, what are you, scare, you guys are the scarecrows? This Wizard of Oz? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I date myself? It's the Wizard of Oz in this career. If I only had a brain. I don't know what to tell you. Listen. Pay attention. You might learn something. Yeah, and Diaz. Are, huh? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said the Astros are, are struggling to find that chemistry. Yep. And Joe Spada, like a good manager, is trying to find a mix. Yep. It's not a Spada indictment. He sat down with Alvarez and was like, yeah, you're going to hit second. The guy's like, what? Me? Behind the guy that swings at the first pitch every time? How am I going to know what they're going to do? Might as well hit him in the one spot. How do, you, how do you not get that? How do you not see that? How do you not look at what a spot is doing? And if you're going to do it that way, for all you analytics guys that think think I'm a bitter old scout, you hit paying your nine. You know why you hit paying your nine? Because he gets on base. Hit paying your nine, you pit out two vay one, and then you got two guys with traffic. None of even suggested that. You know why? Because you don't know what you're doing. That's why. You got no idea. Matter of fact, let me let me just find. Let me see if I can find the book that they learned. I found it. I found oh it. boy. Ready? Found Show and tell time. There's the book. There's the book. That's the baseball book you got your knowledge from. It's blank. Like your knowledge. You know, nothing. Now, back to go what I was talking about. This team's got to win. They're a good team. The window is not wide open forever. You're watching the pitching come up from the minor leagues and get literally blasted. Even though you guys want to hate on the fact that, you know, the prospects in the system, when I said they were bad, Um, if you want your club to win, or you better yet, you guys want to have intelligent takes. I know I'm back on this thing. You got to pay attention. You got to got to pay attention. Get a pencil out. Get a pen. Get a calculator. Put it together. Figure it out. 
You got Yanar Diaz, who got a chance to be special. You got Jeremy Pena, who really would benefit put in front of Alvarez. You got Bregman, who I don't care who you hit three, who you hit four. Just get me more traffic. That was the point of what we talked about. You know, and maybe I'm fired up more about the 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 idiocy of some of the baseball takes that I've seen. Just the idiocy and the laziness to this analytics thing. We do deeper analytics than a lot, lot of teams, man. <laughs> we do, we can tell you how these guys can play because we measure it all, we cover it all, we forecast it all, we build them all. The sports science stuff that we do and the role forecasting on the medical side with all these TJs, they ain't happening here. Find me a guy that went through here that's got Tommy John. Anyway, go ahead. You know, one thing we didn't touch on was this MLBPA and MLB going back and forth about the pitch clock and whether or not it's the sole factor. Would that be accurate that what we're seeing with all the pitchers injuries I, I think, I think uh, it's a perfect cocktail, but here's the thing, Jeremy. This has been going on for decades. I mean, I'm pulled up an article right here, Jeremy. This is from July 4th, 1990. And it's talking about it's talking about the arm injuries and how the San Francisco Giants the year before they used 21 pitchers last year, including 15 starters. And the 1990 Giants are threatening those numbers. Six St. Louis pitchers have had elbow operations. The Dodgers have one star, Fernando Valenzuela, pitching with a dead arm. Two more, Oral Hershiser, Jim Gott, trying to come back from career-threatening injuries. It's going to happen. And... Now, Justin Verlander spoke to us on Sunday following his rehab start, and I guess I could play some of what he had to say about this. I think the game has changed a lot. Uh, you know, I, 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 it, I think the I think it'd be easiest to sit here and blame the pitch clock. Um, you know, I think in reality, uh, you put everything together, and um, everything has a little bit to a little bit of influence. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is that the, the, the style of pitching has changed so much. Um, you know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, um, you know, it's hard to deny those results, obviously. Uh, how can you – it's 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 a double-edged sword. How can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing 100? And, and you know, this, this, this young guy comes up and throws a pitch 95 and gives up a big homer, and everybody's like, what the hell, man? It was um... – he went very in depth because obviously when you're at his age and his stature in the game, people want to know how he feels, but he just, one thing that he brought up and certainly this would be no surprise to you, given your place in the game and how your business operates and the, the type of players that you are involved with. Basically, this idea now of all these kids throwing harder and harder and harder, younger and younger and younger. And, um, you know, he even said, listen, when I if I was a kid now, I don't know if anyone would look at me because I grew into my body. I was nothing in high school. I wasn't drafted. I, I went to college and then I developed and I I developed a routine in my body. I grew into my body and. And he's exactly right about that stuff in terms of the experience factor. But now we're just like, hey, how can we get on Instagram and, and show somebody that we're, you know, hitting this this threshold or doing this and and people can see how fast I'm throwing. There in our in my space, our space of, of uh, amateur baseball, beneath the college level. And obviously we're in the college level now. The driving force for that is is three different ways. Now, I, I do believe the amount of events and the way that's happened by a certain entity has a lot to do with that. Um, I think there's a lot of good people on our side of it, and I don't want to paint everybody with a broad brush. Okay, But I will say that that particular part of it is driven by one group. That I'll tell you. Now, um, there's, there's the FOMO fear of missing out. 
And so mom and dad have been sold this deal that you have to be ranked to have any kind of success story. And to be ranked, the easiest way to rank things for guys that can't evaluate is on velocity or on raw power or on raw foot speed. But newsflash for all of you, the people that peak too early don't make it. I saw a video of a kid throwing 98 miles an hour, and I'm going to run this back to you, who's 16 years old, and another kid who's throwing 95 as a freshman. I saw them because they're all over X and people promote them. I have no interest in those two kids. None. And people are going to go, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, because that's a concern. That's a concern. Those are the kids that end up popping. Those are the kids that end up breaking. And there's a stat out there, and I want to say this is it. So, you know, please don't, if I'm wrong, it's going to be close. I don't think anybody who's had Tommy John under, under the age of 19 is pitching the big leagues yet. And I, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Might be, you know, somewhere around there. But, you know, age-wise, could be 18, could be 20. I don't know, somewhere in that ballpark. But I don't think anybody who's had, had uh, from what I remember, again, with the qualification, I could have the number wrong. It's in that ballpark. That people haven't been in the, no one's pitching the big leagues has had Tommy John before 19. The human body, no matter how much we develop it, only can do so much. And it's really not even so much an issue with velocity, although the continued intent, as much as you want it, that's how guys break. Here's where we thought we've fallen off. We're doing it way too much wrong with wrong coaches in there, teaching bad information, trying to do whatever they can to run these kids through it so they can get ranked, so somebody will go see them so they can move on. Okay, 13 billion people on the planet last 100 and whatever amount of years, 20,000 big leaders. The odds are against you. The odds are against you. Second, college baseball is a very, very, very small pyramid. The odds are against you too, okay? It doesn't mean you don't shoot for the moon. It just means the odds are against you. You know what matters in college baseball? Winning. Because those coaches don't have a, a system past that. That's their team. That's it. You know what matters in professional baseball? Professional impact. Now, you do need to, at some, some point, have some velocity. There are tool markers for everything we do. Okay, It's just the way it is at every level. But it's, it's a mix of why we're there. And what I would say to sum it up, we're doing it wrong for too much time, too often a year. So if you're running a kid out there and a player at with, with has a baseball that's too big for his hand, that has bad arm action and this inverted W and I don't care what Tom house has to say. Cause I'm, this is a bad thing to get out of. That's a bad thing to get out. of. And when you hurt something in your, in your body, you're going to compensate somewhere else. That's a human thing. doesn't matter if it's an ankle or shoulder it matter. You're going to compensate somewhere else. So if you're dinged up and you don't know it and you compensate another part of your body, trying to find ways to compete and you're doing it too often with bad mechanics, it's going to build up. That's why you see 12-year-olds popping. That's why you see 14-year-olds popping, 16-year-olds, because they're asking their bodies to do something they're not ready for. Butch Bacala taught me about the head whack when I was, when I was a scout. And he's, I mean, we learned you don't want to do that. Keep your chin on the glow. Okay. But Butch said they're asking their body to do something they can't do. See, it was the cleanest way to put it. They're, you're asking your body to do something you can't do. The arm action, the arm issues are because we're doing something wrong too many times and too frequently for too long. That's what we're doing. That's it. That's it. And when it comes down to the muscle memory that develops in the pro ball, yeah, they're going to break because the body's still going to break. And I will also qualify it with this final point. We have a group of people that have decided to restrict how much we can do with our arm because it's done incorrectly. If we don't know what arm action's like and we don't know what it's supposed to be, learn. That's like saying that Jordan Alvarez hit second. Who cares what happens after that? It's idiotic. So when you're talking about arm action and proper mechanics and velocity programs, there's a place for all that. But there's building blocks that has to happen before you get there. And you certainly shouldn't be doing this on the mound in a place that you're doing it wrong for that often. The body will break. And that's where we are. It's just catching up to us. In Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball, they need to throw more, not less. We also have taken out distance running. You know what distance running does? It builds up endurance. Builds up strength. You went for sprint running because it builds up fast switch fibers. That's what you did. Why, why not both? Why one or the other? Why not both? Why not build up fast switch fibers and build up um, endurance to allow yourself to be able to compete for longer, longer, um, 
longer stretches in the game to allow yourself to get through tough moments mentally, by the way, and stop making everything a 10 second video game spurt. Let's say you can't do both, but we've chosen not to as an industry, the people that taught this, and this is the result. So when you look at people who are talking about this, you're going to see that people have solutions and they're offering solutions. You know what you want to pay attention to? Not the people that are offering solutions. Listen to the, watch the people that aren't saying anything. They'll tell you. Because if they're not saying anything, that's because they know they contributed. If they don't have a solution, it's because they're making money on the problem. We have a solution. I'm working with some of the best doctors in the world. And one of the most noted institutions in the world. And we've been working on this for a while. I'm in conversations at the highest levels of the game on health protocols, scheduling, calendar. We're going to fix it. It's not overnight. Verlander was right. It's not overnight. We're going to fix it. You fix it through education. You fix it through letting mom and dad, dad know you don't have to do it that way. Kind of like you don't have to do it on Alvarez second. Nobody else <laughs> behind the rest of the line. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But again, to think that this is some kind of, I mean, Jeff Passan wrote a whole book about this uh, a few years ago. Like this isn't new. Uh, again, you can go back throughout time and it's just, it's just the nature of the game. It's not a natural movement. This, this idea of throwing a baseball. Uh, did want to get your take on Jackson Holiday. What's his ceiling? Whatever what? he wants it to be. Really? Before that, though, let's file this under classy. Jackson Holiday brought up to the major leagues. The Orioles had to clear a roster spot. And as you know, likely, they placed Tony Kemp, or they DFA'd him, and Tony Kemp went on social media, really one of the good guys in the game. In the fall of 2010, our college, Vanderbilt, had a series against the Longhorns for a three-game set. Our hitting coach at the time was Josh Holiday, and his brother Matt brought his kid to our early practice. I remember watching his son, Jackson Holiday, with a sweet lefty swing. Go get him, kid. That's Tony pretty Kemp, cool. That's pretty Tony, cool. Tony Kemp's a class act. That was a fight with a with a. Uh... A different area scout. I was cross-checking at the time. I wanted him. I wanted him. Didn't get him. The area scout didn't like him is what it is. Um, but you know Jackson wrote, Holiday, to you, Jackson Holiday's ceiling is whatever he wants it to be? Yeah, whatever he wants it to be. And he's he's made himself into a player. Um, it's pretty. It's it's not just pretty good. It's electric with what he can do. Um, obviously, he's got bloodlines. I, I know Josh well. Um, know Matt less well, but I know Josh well. Um, Josh and I go back to college, actually had an interaction with Josh and he was catching and I was in the box and he was quick pitching me and Scott Williamson was on the mound. I kind of looked at Josh and I was like, he, he just smiled at me. You know, he just kind of grinned at me and ever since then, you know, jo but good for Jackson, good for the family. Um, he, it's, it's earned, it's early and it's earned early, you know, and good for Mike for bringing him up and making sure that he was able to get there to get his service time. And, you know, obviously there's other things tied to that to benefit the club too, but uh, Jackson Holiday is going to be whatever he wants to be. Now, for those of you who may be listening to this or watching this, and I'm sure some will say, well, you know, Jeremy says he doesn't care, but he certainly went on a long rant about, you know, after saying he doesn't read the stuff and this and that, I will, um, it's partly, I don't want to say my fault, but I get amused by some of this stuff. And and then I, it, yeah, it's my fault. So then I tell Jeremy, hey, um, I just happened to be scrolling and I saw this or someone hit me up with that or people were talking to me at the game about this. So um, that's partly where Jeremy, mostly where Jeremy has heard or read all this stuff. And um, well, I, let me say maybe this. I'm, maybe I'm the one putting the the log on the fire. Let, let, me, let me say this. What I'm, what I'm the most... The, the, the people that don't know what they're talking about just don't know what they're talking about. The like, lazy you, takes comment, that, that gets me. That, that that to me is like, it's not la like, these aren't lazy takes. He's not doing it for clicks. He's not no, doing it for impressions. We're not doing, I mean, it, that's not the, why the, you're the, here. The lazy, the lazy take comment 
is, is the lazy takes on that or even making the comment that this is lazy on this side. Like you put it's you don't even understand because you're not doing any homework. You're not listening. You're not looking. You're not paying attention. You're not thinking for yourself. You're spitting out what you read in a book. And a lot of this has to do with a couple of people who want to be Jeff Luno. You guys think you're Jeff Luno. He's he's your hero. He's your savior. You know, when Jeff Luno figured out he needed the other side in 2016. That's when he figured it out. He couldn't do it all in analytics. He figured it out on the other side. Now, the culture was not good. And I've said this forever, and we don't need to rehash that. But when it comes to what Jeff was doing, he figured out he needed the other side. You just don't see any of that because you guys think you can look at a book and do two plus two, and that's how you figure it out. That's not baseball. These guys aren't robots. And to be honest with you, the fact that you guys think that way, that's what, what, what frustrates me because it's asinine. It's got no place in it. But you guys are free to say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. What frustrated me, really frustrated me, was what I think is the unprofessionalism of people saying things that are very lazy, not doing the homework when it comes to the analytics, not doing the homework to come what it's about, not listening to a thing, just deciding to go ahead and say stuff that is inaccurate on air for clicks. Now, there was somebody else who tried that once. And I gave that person an opportunity to talk to me face to face. And when I got a chance to see that person, that person didn't take that chance. And I would leave it there because that person made it very well, very clear. He wanted nothing to do with it. And so what I'll say to you is if you think you're smart enough, whoever you know who you are, to go ahead and fabricate things without doing any homework, next time I see you, talk to me. Come ask questions. I'm happy to educate you. We ain't going to be friends. You've lost my respect, which I don't think you care about because you wouldn't have done what you did anyway. But maybe I'll do for you what I've done for some other media members, and I'll introduce them to people in the game. Because there are other media members here who don't work for KHOU who will happily tell you that they've gone to winter meetings when I'm there, when I'm hanging out with the people I know, and they've walked up, and I've introduced them to front office members for every team that I'm hanging out with while you guys are sitting there chirping behind your computer. So if you'd like to really understand what this game is and how to make it tick, have some cojones, huevos, come talk to me, do some homework on what you're talking about, and then you might get my respect back. Until then, you're just a voice in the crowd. As a matter of fact, you're a clown. And I'm not nine years old, so I don't pay attention to clowns anymore. I'm good. And we are running out of time, Jeremy. So on that note, thank you at all. Thank all of you for listening to it and watching another Extra Bases. Jeremy, until next time, at least on the air, he is Jeremy Booth. I'm Jason Bristol. You can do your, yeah, there you do. There you go. You can do your thing again because I didn't have it on. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, listening, and uh, leave your comments below. As always, we appreciate you watching. Till next time. Bye.